Algebra 2, Unit 8, Rationals, Study Guide, Numbers 1 through 8. So we're going to multiply or divide the rational expressions, and then we're going to state any restrictions on variables or exclusions for the domain that are needed. So the first thing we need to do is factor all the numerators and denominators. So let's start by factoring the first numerator. So the two numbers that I'll multiply to give us negative 12 and negative 1 are negative 4 and 3. So since our a value is 1, we can write those as our factors. In the denominator, we can factor out a 4, greatest common factor. When we're dividing um, rationals, we end up multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to change division to multiplication. So we'll have 6 over that quadratic expression. So we're looking for numbers that will multiply to give us 8 and combine to give us negative 6. So negative 4 and negative 2 will work. And since our a value is 1, those will be our factored expressions. Now we can divide out any numerator with any denominator. So we can divide out our x minus 4s and our x plus 3. We can also divide out 2 from 6 and 4. And we'll write what we have left, which is 3 over 2 times the quantity x minus 2. Now we're going to look at any values in the step before the last one that would make any expression in the denominator 0. So we have to exclude negative 3 because that makes the expression x plus 3 0. And then we have to exclude 4 and 2 because those numbers make the expressions x minus 4 and x minus 2 0. So this will be our final answer and our restrictions or exclusions named for x. Now let's look at number 2. So we're just going to simplify, but we're going to start by factoring the numerator and denominator, just like our first problem. So we'll factor out a greatest common factor of 3, and then we'll do our quadratic factoring, looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 35 and combine to give us negative 2. So negative 7 and 5. Those will be our factored expressions, and then we can divide out any common factor. So we can divide out our x minus 7s, and our final answer will be 3 over x plus 5. We'll look at the step just above to see any values that would make our denominator 0, and those are the ones we will exclude for our domain. So that would be 7 and negative 5. Now let's look at number 3. So we're simplifying, so we're going to start by factoring again. So quadratic factoring, looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 27 and combine to give us negative 6, which is negative 9 and 3. And those will be our factors. And in the denominator, we're looking for numbers that multiply to give us negative 30 and combine to give us negative 7. So we'll get negative 10 and 3. Now we can divide out any common expressions in our numerator and denominator and we'll be left with x minus 9 over x minus 10. We'll look at the step just above for values that we need to exclude for our domain. 10 and negative 3 are the values that would make our expression, so our denominator 0. So that's what we exclude. On to number 4. So now we just have to factor each part and then we'll multiply. So we'll factor out a common factor of 5x in our first numerator. Then we'll look for numbers that multiply to give us 1 and combine to give us negative 2. So x minus 1 times x minus 1. Numerator on the right, we'll look for numbers that multiply to give us 4 and add to give us 3. So that would be 4 and negative 1. And then in the denominator, numbers that will multiply to give us 8 and combine to give us 6, which is 4 and 2. Before we multiply straight across, we're going to divide out any numerator with any denominator, common expression. So you'll see everything divides out except our 5x on the top and x plus 2 in our denominator. Now we'll look at the step just above to exclude values that would make our denominator 0, and those are 1, negative 2, and negative 4. All right, number five. So now we're adding. Um, we need to get a common denominator. Once we add and get our sum, then we'll list our domain restrictions. <clears throat> so notice that our denominator is common, so we can go ahead and combine those numerators. 
all over one of those common denominators. So we get 2 plus x all over 5x plus 9. Now to figure out what we need to exclude in our denominator, we're going to set our denominator equal to 0 and solve. So the value that would make our denominator 0 is negative 9 fifths. So we need to say that x cannot equal negative 9 fifths. In number 6, we're adding, so before we get a common denominator, we need to start by factoring any numerator or denominator that we can. So we'll factor out, our, factor out a greatest common factor of 2, and then we'll look for numbers that multiply to give us negative 16 and add to give us 2, which would be 5 and negative 3. And those will be our factors in our denominator. And then we'll rewrite our second rational. Now let's get a common denominator. We need a term from each of our denominators. So we need x plus 5 times x minus 3 for our first um, denominator. And then for our second, x plus 5. So we're going to get a common denominator of that. So with our first, first expression, we don't have to multiply by anything. But with our second rational, we need to multiply top and bottom by what's missing, x minus 3. So we'll rewrite multiplying at the, our top numerator, 2x plus 10, over our common denominator. And then we'll distribute that 3 and get 3x minus 9. Now we're going to add all both numerators and put them over one common denominator. And that's all over x plus 5 times x minus 3. Now we just clean up the numerator. So we add our x's together, which gives us 5x, and then our numbers, which gives us a positive 1. So that's our simplified um, expression after we added those two original rationals. And then we're going to exclude any values for x that would make our denominator 0, which is negative 5 and 3. And now number 7, we're subtracting. So we don't have any factoring to do. We just need to find a common denominator. So we're going to take a term from each of these denominators. And then we'll multiply each rational by what's missing. So we'll take the first one, top and bottom, by x plus 2. And the second one, numerator and denominator, by x minus 3. <clears throat> so we'll rewrite those expressions distributing our values, so 5x plus 10 over our common denominator minus x minus 3 over our common denominator. And now we'll combine the numerators all over one common denominator. Now watch this. When you're subtracting, you need to distribute the negative. So 5x plus 10 minus x plus 3. See how that sign changed? Because we're subtracting a negative 3. Now we'll just clean up the numerator, so combine like terms, and that will be our final expression after we found the difference of those two original rationals. We'll exclude any values that make our denominator 0, which is negative 2 and 3. All right, number 8. So we don't have any factoring to do on this one. Let's just find a common denominator. So 7 and x will take care of terms from both denominators. So we'll just multiply each rational by what's missing. So the first one, we multiply top and bottom by 7. And the second one, we don't have to multiply by anything. Now we'll just combine our numerators over a common denominator. And then we'll exclude any values of x that make our denominator 0, which is simply x cannot equal 0.